Hello everyone and welcome to Beginner's Code. Today we are going to be using HTML, CSS and JavaScript to create a on-click counter that updates the value every time it has been clicked. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is just create three files. So the first will be an index.html, the next will be a main.css and then finally we will have our main.js file. Now the index.html, we can just pass in HTML5 and then we can change the title. So on click counter. And now we can link to the main.css by passing in the main.css file to the link tag. Now inside the actual body, we want to have um, a div for our background and then a heading for the number change and then a button for someone to click on. Um, we also need to then link our JavaScript. So what we'll do first is create a div and that will just be called back. And then we will create a heading with a ID of number and we'll pass in the value of zero. So we have an actual um, value and then we'll use button and we will pass in the value of clicker. And then inside of here, we will just say, click me. And now at the bottom of our body tag, we want to use the script and we'll pass in the uh, JavaScript file here. So main.js. Uh, now, if we move over to our main.css, we can start editing there. However, if we actually open this so open with Google Chrome. We now have our value of zero and a button that we can click. So now if we start adding some styles, we can start with the body and we'll just change the display to flex, justify content to center and then align items to center. And now we can start styling the card, the background. Um, so this will have a display of flex and we will also justify the content to the center and then align items to center. And now we want to change the flex direction to column and we can change the width to 50% just so it's half the width. And now if we move back to here, we will change it and it's all in the middle. It will still be going down, which it was at the very beginning. However, if we change this to row, it would look like that. So we'll change it back. And now we'll start adding some uh, color. So the background color, we'll use a RGBA value of 65, um, 105, and then uh, 225 and 0.7. So now if we save this and return, we ha now have the background of the card being this light blue color. So now we can actually add some styling to the card by changing the border radius to 10 pixels. This will curve the edges and then we'll give a box shadow of 0 pixels, 0 pixels, eight pixels and then naught with another RGB value of 3, 75 and 85. And then finally, we just want to push the card down slightly on the page. So we'll just give it a hundred pixels of a margin top. And now it kind of looks like this. So we have curved edges with a little spread of the background, giving it a little 3D effect. We just now to need to adjust the height. So to do this, we can actually start by um, adjusting the button. So we'll pass in clicker and then we'll do the width to 200 pixels, the height to 50 pixels, and then the border radius to 10 pixels. So now if we refresh this, we have a much bigger um, clicking button and the actual height has automatically adjusted. Now we'll give this a box shadow of exactly the same. So 0, 0, 8 pixels, 0, and then RGB of 375, 85. Next, we'll give a background color 
of RGBA with 10 for 90 and then 0 0.6 and then we can change the actual color to an RGB of 255, 255, 255 and now if we return this we have white text with this darker blue button and now we can change the margin bottom to be 100 pixels just to give a little bit more extra space and then we can give a transition of two seconds now we want to actually target the zero value that we have here and just start styling that so we can pass in heading one and then we will just change the color to be rgb of 255 255 255 so another white and then we can change the font size to be 144 pixels so this will make it much bigger on the screen and then we can change the letter spacing to be 1.1m. Uh, so now if you were to actually change this to the value 10 and run it, we have much bigger letter spacing. So now if we were to say 0.1, we have a little bit of letter spacing compared to if that was commented out. So if we keep that as 0.1 and then save, we can now actually give some animation to the button. So whenever we're hovering over the button, we can make it grow and then shrink. So what we'll do first is we'll actually create a keyframe. So keyframes, and we'll just call it grow. And then we'll say at 0%, we want the transform and we'll pass in scale of, scale of one. And then at 25%, we want the same. And then we'll pass in the scale to be 1.4. And then what we'll do is we'll just copy that and paste it there and there and there. So now we can change that to 50, that one to 75, and that one to 100 and add 1.4 there. So now we will be going from a scale of 1 to 1.4, back to 1, then to 1.4, and then back to 1. And that will work every two seconds, which we can adjust. We could make it 60 seconds. So the next thing that we're going to do is just use the hover button or the pseudo, the pseudo element. So clicker and then hover, and we'll use the animation dash name and we'll pass in grow and then we'll use animation slash duration and we'll pass in here 60 seconds and now if we come back to here we should see an animation change um, unless I've done something wrong However, it looks like it should be correct. Ah, no, there you go. Missed off the ID selector. So now if we return here, we start to see it does start to grow and then it will start to shrink slowly. So now that we have our CSS actually styled and it looks the way we want it to, we can head over to our main.js file. Now here we just need to add a couple of lines of code. The first will be declaring a variable. So we'll say let counter equal zero. And then we will say, well, we need to create a function that will increment the counter. And then we can actually pass that as um, in a HTML to the um, ID of counter. So what I mean by this is if we create a function that says count, we can then pass in the counter variable that we created above and just increment it using the two pluses. And then we'll say document.getElementById. And here we'll pass in number, which is this line here, the heading one. Now, if we were to say dot 
inner HTML and set that equal to counter. Now we can create a um, event listener. So we'll say document dot add event listener and we'll wait for the content to be loaded. And then inside of here, we want to use a function whenever the content has been loaded. So this function will just use the document dot get element by ID and we'll pass in the clicker value. So we want to wait to see we want to wait until the content has been loaded and then we want to grab the clicker and every time the clicker has been clicked, so dot on click, we can then set that equal to the count function we created. So whenever it's clicked, it will actually call this count function and then change the value of counter. So now if we save this and come back to here, now just need to change this back to zero and if we refresh this and then click, we now have a work encounter that increments every time we click the button. So if we stop for a little second and then come back, it still changes. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this has helped your understanding of how we can use HTML, CSS and JavaScript to make our websites more instant and interactive without having to refresh pages. If you liked what we've been through and you want to learn more, please drop a like and subscribe to my channel to keep up to date. Don't forget to stay tuned, ready for the first release of my free 30 days of Python guide.